base is probably the one it's probably the one they will focus on. Because you can have so many more situations. You can introduce buffered solutions uh, into acid base and it encompasses all of the concepts of general equilibrium. But in order to understand acid base, we need to have a really good foundation in general equilibrium. So that's where we're gonna that's where we'll start today. And then at the next prep session in April, we may get into acid base and solubility and all of that. Okay. So starting at the at the cheat sheet, let's make sure we have uh, some basic foundations in place. Equilibrium is talking about a dynamic system. Basically, the rate of the, the the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So we're looking very few reactions in chemistry go all the way to completion or all the way to what's referred to as the right, all the way to the formation of the product. Most of them establish some sort of equilibrium under given conditions. So equilibrium is considering both the the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse reaction, and when they reach that balance, the molar balance. There are lots of symbols associated with this, but they all start with K. So there's KC, there's KEQ, which essentially means the same thing. There's plain old K, which means the same as KC and KEQ. Then there's KP, which is the equilibrium constant for gases. And that's where we use a slightly different uh, way of writing the formula to calculate. We're going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle, which is predicting which way the equilibrium, or which way the reaction will move in order to reestablish equilibrium, and we'll talk about uh, conditions that are not at equilibrium and determining or making predictions about what has to happen mathematically in order to get to equilibrium. There's also um, manipulations for equations and how you manipulate the rate, uh, the equilibrium rate con or the equilibrium constant uh, when you manipulate the reactions. And we'll mention that uh, those are listed there for you. We utilize a basic mathematical concept called the law of mass action. And essentially, so it's only going to be the same setup. The products are going to be divided by the reactants. If it's KEQ, KC, or just K, then we're looking at the concentration of the products being divisible by the concentration of the reactants raised to the appropriate power, and the power is correlated with the coefficient from the balanced equation. If you're talking about pressure, then we're looking at the partial pressures of the individual gases. Still, products divided by reactants raised to the appropriate power. In solving them, we would always solve for K if the solutions are presumed to be at equilibrium. If we don't know, then we would solve for what's called Q. And Q is the reaction quotient. And the reaction quotient is equivalent to our equilibrium expression. It's the exact same formula as the law of mass action, product divided by reactants. But then we have to make a judgment call as to whether or not Q is equal to K, Q is greater than K, or Q is less than K. And depending on what Q's relationship is to K, then we can determine which way the direction uh, the reaction direction has to go in order to establish the equilibrium. Mm -hmm. We generally do not worry about units for K. Uh, it's one of the, I think it's one of the only times on the AP exam where you don't have to worry about trying to put a unit on anything. Um, temperature. Uh, K is temperature dependent. You're in here for equilibrium? Okay. Oh, no. You may want to stop that loud because I need to.